Hi, and welcome to another session of Patch and Rent. In this episode, we're going to talk about how you can troubleshoot a failed remote wipe. We're going to do so by using the same tools we covered in earlier episodes of Patch and Rent. Also, if you are finding these breakdown helpful, hit like so we know it's useful and feel free to subscribe so you don't miss the next Patch and Rent. Well, let's talk about why a remote wipe sometimes pretends to work, but it really isn't wiping your device at all. Because here's the thing, when you perform a remote wipe from Intune, normally everything looks like it works, right? The device disappears from the portal, with it, the BitLocker recovery keys, the lab's password is gone. The device is removed from the Intune portal. But when looking at the device, it just reboots and it shows you the magical screen that there was a problem resetting your PC. And from there on, it just drops straight back into Windows. And one thing is for sure, no reset happened. The device wasn't wiped at all. And the funny thing is that the device still looks fully operational. The user can still log in. He, can, he or she can still use all the third-party apps we automatically updated. It seems that everything is still working. But behind the scenes, well, the device is no longer syncing with Intune. No new policies will be applied. So for compliance reasons, that's going to be a big issue. And I guess the worst part, you can't manage it anymore. So fixing it remotely, well, that ship has sailed. That's not going to work at all. So we intend to figure out why and what happened. So to figure out what happened, we need to do some proper invocation. And you know me, I love to dive deep in these kinds of things. So I think the best thing to first look at, at least when a remote wipe has failed, the first place I normally look at is the sysreset folder that's on the C drive. So for example, we have the sysreset folder here. This folder is, well, it's hidden by default, but it gets created automatically when a reset starts. Even if the reset of the wipe, remote wipe fails along of half hour along the way. So when a remote wipe fails, this is the folder you need to look at. So I guess it's time then to switch to the demo instantly, right? So the sys reset folder. Well, time to show you what's inside, right? So again, this folder is one of the most important folders you want to check out when there is an issue with the remote wipe. So inside the sys reset folder, which is in here the folder, you will find a folder named logs. Well, guess what's inside? Logs. So if you open up that folder, you will notice a couple of things, some uh, .exe files, which are the logs files, and something that is called the ETL file. Well. There's a trace file the reset engine uses to lock every single step in the wipe process. So I'm going to open up, open it up with the Windows Performance Analyzer. And if you have watched on our earlier episode where we showed you the Windows Performance Analyzer tool, the API tool, you will know that it's pretty useful for pinpointing when things go wrong. So I'm going to use the Windows Performance Analyzer again to find out when and what happened during the remote wipe. So I'm going to open it up. And as mentioned before, I'm going to add the time because I want to know when things went wrong. And from there on, I just scroll down. And as you can see, I already marked it or selected it. In the ETL file, in the trace file, it's shown as that SOSXS corruption has occurred and that we have a corrupt payload file. Well, at least that told us something. The payload was missing, but it still didn't tell us which component. So I guess it's time to move to some other logs as well. So if I'm going to take a close look at that folder as well, we will notice that it contains a setup act and setup error uh, log file. So uh, I'm going to open up them with uh, the CM trace tool, which is a perfect tool when uh, you want to open some logs file because it's has some pretty good structure in it. And as you can see with the setup act log, it contains every single step along the way, which is a little bit too much, but if you are bored, well, start reading it. 
it will at least show you what really happens during remote wipe. But I guess it's the best of the best thing you can do is just start with the errors, right? So I opened up that uh, log file as well. And within a couple min minutes or seconds, I noticed that it was mentioning the same thing as the ETL file. And it was uh, mentioning that there was a missing payload. So that's still weird, right? But if I move up a little bit to the top, we'll note something else because in it, it was mentioning that uh, file zlib.dll was missing from the uh, AMD user experience IX folder. Well, I guess I'm missing the DLL file. I guess that's what really killed the reset. And if for some reason uh, those logs files aren't in the sys reset folder, you can also find them in the say Windows logs push button reset folder as well. So it's the same structure, same logs. So again, it's all about the logs. And I guess now we know the component name which failed. So it failed on the user experience and because the zlib DLL file was missing. And from there, I wanted to know more. Why was that component failing and which component am I looking at? Because user experience, it doesn't really ring a bell. So from there on, I opened the registry and uh, opened up the component-based servicing. Inside the folder, I went to the packages and just scrolled down to the user experience IX package, which is the same package that was failing during the remote wipe. So. The moment I clicked on owners, I noticed something funny because it was mentioning recall. I guess that rings a bell. And I guess that explains it as well because the recall feature was introduced in the May 2005 cumulative update. And I guess that's the moment it starts failing. And well, here's what happened. The metadata for that user experience, the recall component, was requested. But the actual payload wasn't present. So when win Windows tries to rehydrate it during the reset, it failed because the file needed zlibdll and a lot of other files as well because the whole folder in the WinSX folder was almost empty. And well, with the files not, em not being there, the remote wipe will fail. So at that point, we had what we needed, right? So I guess it's time to do some stupid things because I want to fix it, we know what broke it, when we know when it broke it, so we now need to fix it. And well, I love to do stupid things, so let's start doing some stupid things then. So if we want to fix these kinds of issues, of course, it depends on what's going wrong, but I love to do stupid things. So I was like, well, I know how the flow of the reset or the re wipe works. And the first thing, the first thing it checks to rehydrate, uh, the OS is looking at the C Windows Servicing packages, packages folder. So I was like, well, if I can just kick out the user experience, IX, uh, mum and cat files, why not? So I did a stupid thing. I just took over uh, the permissions of those files. And after taking ownership of those files, I just deleted them, which is normally a pretty stupid thing to do. But well, it removed the invalid reference from the servicing stack. And from there on, we can trigger the remote wipe again. And this time it worked because, again, during the reset, it couldn't find the mum and cat files, so it just skipped that whole future. And with it skipping that future, the remote wipe worked. And with it, the whole system was fully reset to an operational state. And it came back to a management state. So with the device being wiped and successfully being reset without having any issues, so the whole operating system is built from scratch and it's working again. So after logging in, all the third-party apps deployed to Intune will, will get reinstalled and automatically updated thanks to patch memory C. No repackaging, no extra steps, just up to date from day one, from the, the moment you have re of wiped your device. And if you want to see how that works in your environment or in your tenant, come book a demo and we'll show you how it could make your life uh, way, way more easier. So I guess it's time to move on to the root cause because at least we know that the user experience, uh, EX, aka recall, is a culprit. At least that's what I believe because removing those two files seems to fix the wipe. 
So let's discuss what really caused the remote wipe to fail in the first place. Because I was using my own ISO image with an, the July update injected and somehow I couldn't reproduce it. So I need to reach out again to the one that asked me to look at it. And he explained that he was using our own custom RIM uh, image of a RIM file, which a lot of companies do, right? He, da he downloaded the RIM file from the volume licensing center and injected that with the latest update. So in this case, a June or July update. And he did that for every single month. He ensured that the RIM image was totally up to date before enrolling the device. And well, the real problem, as I discussed earlier, and what I was showing from the registry, the May 2025 update introduced recall, and with it, the component that was breaking the remote wipe of preventing the remote wipe, user experience IEX, was added. And that component is now part of every update that followed, so June, July, and of course the May update. If you are injecting your RIM image with that update, well, that really breaks the remote wipe. And well, the funny thing is if you don't perform a remote wipe, but just a local wipe, so a local reset from the settings uh, menu or using the company portal to reset the device, that just works. And that's pretty weird if you ask me. So there must be some difference between a remote wipe and a reset, but I guess we can just blame recall for that. So let's discuss what really caused the remote wipe to fail in the first place because I was using my own ISO image with an, the July update injected and somehow I couldn't reproduce it. So I need to reach out again to the one that asked me to look at it. And he explained that he was using our own custom RIM uh, image of a RIM file, which a lot of companies do, right? He, da he downloaded the RIM file from the volume licensing center and injected that with the latest update. So in this case, a June or July update. And he did that for every single month. He ensured that the RIM image was totally up to date before enrolling the device. And well, the real problem, as I discussed earlier, and what I was showing from the registry, the May 2025 update introduced recall. And with it, the component that was breaking the remote wipe of preventing the remote wipe, user experience IEX, was added. And that component is now part of every update that followed. So June, July, and of course, May update. If you are injecting your RIM image with that update, well, that really breaks remote wipe. And well, the funny thing is if you don't perform a remote wipe, but just a local wipe, so a local reset from the settings menu or using the company portal to reset the device, that just works. And that's pretty weird if you ask me. So there must be some difference between a remote wipe and a reset, but I guess we can just blame recall for that. Let's wrap up then, because, well, at least now you know what broke the remote wipe. I think it's recall, because removing those files responsible for recall will fix it. But, well, next time, if you run into a similar issue when you perform a remote wipe, you at least now know where to start looking. Open the sys, re re sys reset folder on a device, and just open the ETL trace, start looking at the log files, and normally within a couple of minutes, it will show you at least where to start digging. I'm not saying it will show you the, how to fix it, but at least it shows you the reason what happened. So that's it for this one. Hit like if it helped, subscribe if you want more of these breakdowns, and I guess we will see you in the next patch event. Join over 8,000 organizations that trust Patch My PC to keep 25 million devices up to date. It's secure, automatic, and built to scale. See for yourself. Click the link to book a live demo with a Patch My PC engineer now.